Hi there, I'm Matt and this is my user review of the Cress FM E1 uh, and it's the 1050 watt version versus the Chinese uh, kind of typical spindle that you can buy on Amazon or eBay. Um, if you're looking for the quick answer, I would choose the Cress spindle all day long just because it's lighter so you can change direction on it much faster if you're um, using a CNC router and you're wanting to up and improve the performance and the speed and stuff like that. So. Uh, and it's much quieter, so if you're sitting in another room, you can't hear that piercing kind of sound um, that the the Chinese spindle gives off um, sometimes. So I used to actually use, um, wear kind of earmuffs um, to stop the, the sound coming in, um, just because I just want to keep uh, protection over my ears. But to give you a bit more of a detailed review, um, just to start off with the Chinese spindle, it comes with a water-cooled connection, and these can be used alternately um, as inlet and outlet or inlet and outlet, doesn't matter which direction, and then it comes with a four pin connection at the top there, <coughs> which are numbered so it's easy to, easy to tell which orientation you put it in. It's mounted on a, um, a clamp um, like this, and it comes with it, um, and it comes with a, a variable speed, a variable uh, frequency controller like this. Um, so so the actual um, weight of this itself is about 2.5 kilograms. Um, but going back to the clamp, I, I suppose I wanted to mention that the, the clamp itself um, is quite uh, close, the mounting plate is quite close to where the, um, the centre of this spindle is. So when you're, um, when you're cutting into the material, the lever arm that you have is, is this distance. Um, so if you're cutting into something quite solid, um, the spindle will rotate around that lever arm um, into the material when you're plunging down into it. Uh, the crest spindle is, uh, has a quite a lot larger um, mounting clamp. Um, this is the one that I, I got from a typical supplier um, with the spindle, I, and I believe that there's quite a lot of these online. So there's a, there's a much bigger distance. There's a fair, I think there's about 20 millimeters in difference between the, the Chinese spindle and this one. And um, this is made out of solid metal, so it depends how, how it's made out of solid aluminium, so it doesn't go anywhere. It's not going to bend itself, but the, if you have any issues with the Z axis bearings on your machine, uh, there's a bit more of a lever arm on this one than the, um, the Chinese spindle. So it's just something to take account for, if you, especially if you cut something like aluminium. But I, I don't particularly cut any hard, really hard materials. Um, <clears throat> so I cut things like um, epoxy foam or MDF or uh, foam, kind of PVC foam or something like that, because I'm working in a lot more composites kind of um, background. Um, I, I make kind of I make sports equipment and um, uh, luxury furniture out of things like carbon fiber and um, stuff like that. So. That's where I'm coming from, that's where my opinions are, are based on. Uh, so I'm cutting a lot lighter work stuff. Um, so I don't that doesn't necessarily matter for me so much, but I'd like to hear what you think of, of these two products if you do use them and their clamps uh, in the discussion below the video. Um, so that would be really interesting to know um, for to update kind of some of the information that um, from my opinion. But um, Overall, this spindle, um, I feel, is much more reliable. I've been using it for two years now, and I've had zero errors with it since I, I started using it. Actually, to be honest, to be truly honest, I did have a couple of errors when I started using it, because the, um, the on-off switch here, um, when you click it in, you have to click it, you have to push it forward and down to keep it on. Um, but the first two times I used it, 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 I didn't push down after I clicked it forward, so it's turned it turned off while I was cutting my um, my models or whatever I was cutting, and um, and it flicked back and then it started moving in the material, and that was uh, that was a little bit annoying. But then I called up the guys who I bought it from and they said, oh, you need to push down uh, after you've clicked it. I've never had a problem after that, but it was a bit um, bit of a pavement uh, for when I started, um, uh, but. After after that, I've had no issues, and it's um, and it's been uh, much more reliable. With the Chinese controller, um, the Chinese the variable frequency controller, um, it has quite big inlets and outlets here for uh, cooling the, the drive units down in here. And um, 
that can soon get filled up with dust in the room if you don't have any kind of kind of uh, contingencies or controls around the, the dust that's coming into the room. So um, you get sometimes you get error messages and stuff like that on the um, <clears throat> on the variable frequency controller here. Um, sorry, VFD variable frequency controller. Um, if you're not aware of the dust that's going uh, going around the room. Uh, sometimes you need to open it up and hoover it out, but it, it, it's fairly like it's fairly consistent. It is a bit annoying if you've got um, a job going on and you want to do something straight away, and then this starts um, pissing about. But um, it's 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 nice to play around with when you start working with it. Um, so um, especially there's so so one of the cool things about this um, uh, Chinese spindle is that you have a dial here to change the frequency um, of the speed on the on the spindle, and I'll just show you what that looks like. Plug it in. So that's what it sounds like when it's on, and that uh, fan noise will be on consistently and constantly while the, the spindle is running. Um, and you can see here that you can dial the speed to whatever you want. And so the, the speed change is, is about after like three seconds or so. So if you're changing something, um, depending on the, dif the difference for speed that you're, if you're going from, if you're going from, from something like 5,000 to 25,000 RPM, I would probably say that it takes about three to four seconds to get up to that speed. And there's a, so there's a little bit of latency there. Um, and as I mentioned, it's quite, it's quite loud and piercing when both those are on. And even if you're in another room, it's, um, you, you want to be wearing... Uh, earmuffs to to stop the the piercing noise from kind of getting to your ears. Um, but the crest spindle uh, has a speed controller actually on the spindle itself, and it goes from one to five. And so one um, stands for stands for five thousand RPM, and six, sorry six is the final value, and that goes up to twenty five thousand RPM. <clears throat> and I've I've never really had to go below five thousand for cutting the kind of things that I really I'm cutting because um, I I tend to go for quite long um, I tend to cut things with quite long flutes and go quite deep into the material so I want to run it at fairly fast speeds just to cut things much more quickly I usually go straight onto a finishing cut because I don't want to do the roughing cuts so I use a lot of lighter materials so um, that's that's kind of where I'm coming from with these, from a speed point of view. Um, so, for that, so that's up to you to um, kind of decide uh, the speeds that you're looking for. Mm. The Cress um, spindle allows you to put um, anything from one millimeter to eight millimeters of diameter for the machine tool bit that you're putting in. And the Chinese spindle allows you to put anything from, I think it's 0.5 millimeters to six millimeters. And I quite like using the the, the higher ranges of, of um, tool bit because when you've got a a larger diameter, and although you can't get as much definition in the fillets, <coughs> what I mean is so um, so if you've got a smaller spin, if you've got a smaller tool bit, you can actually get smaller radiuses on on the cutout that you're trying to cut out. Um, but if you've got a larger uh, tool bit, you have to use um, much larger radiuses, and um, I quite like having larger radiuses because it comes out a lot. The, the the cut that you've got comes out a lot smoother, and you can cut with much larger passovers, and you get smoother component overall. Um, so that's kind of um, that's yeah, that's just kind of where I'm coming from and what I'm cutting. Um, things like foam and stuff like that come out much nicer when you've got a much larger diameter. Um, a tool bit on there, um, in my opinion. So, so, um, so yeah, I've been using the Crest for about two years now, and I've had this uh, Chinese spindle uh, since about four years ago. So, um, but once I switched over to the Crest, I never looked back. Um, just it's, I, I guess, it's simply because of the noise. Um, it's it's just much nicer to to work with. Um, the the crest spindle just because it's it's quieter and I can move the machine faster 
and it's more reliable. It's, it's never let me down apart from the first two times the switch flipped off you know, due to the vibration of the um, the cutting. So um, so yeah, I'll just give you a little feel for what it sounds like. Um, Weight-wise, the um, the Chinese spindle is about 2.5 kilograms, which is kind of like a three weight you'd find in the gym, uh, one of the fairly lightweight ones. But when you feel it in your hand, it's, it's, it's actually like hard. It's, if you want to try and change direction, if you imagine that changing direction on the machine, it's quite hard to kind of uh, work against the inertia of that. But where you've got this one, it's actually, um, you can notice it as soon as you pick it up, basically. And um, especially if you want to do kind of medium volume, it's a mass uh, production, stacking these up next to each other and cutting out things like guitar stocks or uh, just multiple parts at once that are all exactly the same, then I would definitely go for a lighter machine. And, and it's quieter, so you, you're going to define it a lot nicer in the room if you've got multiple ones going on at once. And you don't have to have multiple VFDs also. And then set, um, so that's so that's um, kind of just what I think about that. And um, what it sounds like, let me just plug it in for you. I'll start it on a 5,000 RPM and then I'll move it up to 25,000. So pushing it forwards and then down to make, keep it on. And that's, gonna, that's just going to stay on now. So that's what it sounds like at 5,000 RPM. And let's turn it up to level 6, which is 25,000. So you can feel the air coming off it there. So it's, it's air cooled. So you can feel the air coming off it just at, at the side there. And there's brushes on this, so it will uh, stop the uh, debris from getting in. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I usually use it at around 15,000 at most. Which is about which is which is about that, and the Chinese spindle is a lot louder than this one. I can't plug it in because it needs to have another component, and that's not with me at the moment. But um, the uh, the the Crest is just a lot quieter um, and much nicer to run uh, between 5,000 and 15,000 RPM. You'll find that. Even cutting aluminium, you probably want to use it at about 12,000 or 15,000 RPM, depending on the drill that you've got in there um, and what kind of cooling you've got in there. But um, talking to machinists um, who make some of our molds, um, that's kind of the range that you want to be at. Um, so if you know otherwise, then uh, I'd love to hear in the, in the, the discussion below. Um, uh, also, if you want to find out uh, where I got these either of these products, um, check in the, in the links that I've got below. I will receive a small fee for if you use one of the links that I give you, um, but I really appreciate it if you do like these videos and uh, if you like to um, just like watching them from uh, a spectator's point of view. I'd love it if you could like the videos and and just share your opinion and see what you see what you liked about them. And uh, if you are considering um, purchasing one or if you have used one and you, and you know differently to my opinion, then I'd love to hear what you think and. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the other things I'd like to mention is that this is a plastic, this is plastic, and when I was running it at high speeds, um, like I was just then, if you're leaving it on for about two hours or so, or three hours or ten hours, this doesn't really heat up that much. Um, and even though plastic is an insulator, this this seems to keep itself cool at around, if you're running at 15,000 RPM or so, um, it keeps itself cool for much longer than the Chinese spindle does. So you don't actually need the water cooling that this, this Chinese spindle does have. You don't need to have water cooling on the crest. Um, and this, this um, even even when it's water cooled, does still heat up. I guess I guess because it's it's metal and you can feel it through. Um, but even filling filling the air off this, it comes out. The air comes out nice and hot, and you can't feel even if you're holding it tightly. You can't feel. Um, Heat's like uh, escaping into the casing um, from the motor, so uh, I feel like this is this is a much more reliable and well-made. Um,
spindle than the uh, the Chinese version. The crest is actually made in Germany. Um, <clears throat> so if you if you're if you like um, German manufactured products, then this is a good one to go for. Uh, the Chinese one is great for kind of playing around with when you when you first getting started. Uh, because you can play around with the kind of dial on here um, and uh, get whatever kind of speed that you want um, and run it at slow speed, run it at high speed, it's really nice to fiddle around with um, but if you're a bit more intermediate, uh, serious about um, CNC routing or even if you're using this, if you, know, you can actually use this as a hand tool is that, it's like that light, it's like you can use it as a hand tool to cut stuff um, or you could mount it underneath a bench uh, to to see and see kind of route around something. It's just um, it just it's just a lot more reliable. You don't need to have two components either. So it's just it's all built into one. It just feels a lot more solid uh, to me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's completely up to you. Um, I I um, I'd be interested to hear what you think. Um, I suppose. Um, well, that's pretty much it for the video. Um, let me know what you think in the discussion below and I'll be happy to help you out with any other kind of comments or um, anything you'd like to know for, from these partic two particular products. If you've used or have one of these products and you want to kind of add your own comments and let me know, uh, I'd, I'd basically just be interested to know if, if you're using it for kind of like aluminium cutting or anything harder than kind of foams and MDF and epoxy uh, foams. Um, what you think it's like um, compared to if you've ever used the Chinese spindle or something a bit lighter um, uh, in the kind of spindle range of things. So, um, I mean, lighter duty rather than lighter in weight. So, anyway, uh, let me know what you think. If you like this video, smash that like button. Um, because it will keep the, it, the video will get viewed more and um, people will start to engage more with it. So, um, and uh, put a comment in the in the section below, and I'll join you in the discussion. So, thank you very much for watching. Cheers for watching. Bye bye.